So the goal of this experiment is to determine whether sodium nitrate is spontaneous. So in order to determine whether a reaction is spontaneous or not, there's three important thermodynamic parameters. One is delta H, which is the enthalpy, that's heat flow. So if delta H is negative, that means the reaction is proceeding forward. Also, this term here is entropy, delta S. So enthalpy and entropy. Entropy means disorder. So if the reaction is proceeding towards more disorder, then the reaction is more favored. Temperature, so a lot of reactions, if you increase the temperature, the reaction is favored towards products. Some reactions, if you lower the temperature, the reaction is favored towards products. But the overall judge here is delta G, which is free energy. So if your free energy is negative, then you know for sure the reaction is moving in the forward direction. You know for sure the reaction is going to products. So this is the ultimate judge, delta G, which is gives free energy. If a reaction is going to be what we call spontaneous, or if a reaction is going to move to the product side. If that value is negative, if that value is negative, if delta G is negative, then you know the reaction is what we call exergonic. Exergonic means that it moves in spontaneous. It moves to product side. So delta H is enthalpy. If it's a negative, that is a good contributor towards delta G also moving towards the product side. Delta S is entropy. If that is positive, that's a good contributor for the reaction moving to products and moving forward. And some reactions require temperature to be increased to move forward to the products. Some reactions require temperature to be decreased. So the ultimate judge is delta G, and it's negative, and it takes input from thermodynamics quantity or parameter, FLP, entropy, and temperature. So the first thing in this lab we have to do is make 100 milliliters of sodium nitrate whose concentration is one molar. So this is how we will do that. Here's the calculation. So we're going to take 100 mils, convert it to liters. What we're trying to make is one molar solution. That's the concentration. Remember, big M is moles per liter. And then we will multiply that by the molecular weight. Molecular weight of NaNO3 sodium nitrate is about 85.01 grams of sodium nitrate. That's in one mole. So doing this calculation, the mils and mils cancel, the liters and liters cancel, the moles of NaNO3 cancel with the moles of NaNO3, and we will get grams of sodium nitrate. This is about 8.5 grams of sodium nitrate. So what we will do is weigh out about 8.5 grams of sodium nitrate, put it in 100 milliliters of good pure deionized water, and then we will measure the delta H. Using this equation, remember delta G has to be negative for this reaction to proceed forward. So we're going to calculate the delta H when we dissolve 8.5 grams of this in 100 mils of water. We'll calculate the delta H. Our temperature is about room temperature, 25 degrees C. We will convert that to Kelvin. And we'll calculate the minimal en entropy, the minimal entropy that's required for NaNO3 to be dissolved in 100 mils of water. I put here standard state because we're going to do this experiment under standard state conditions, 25 degrees C. All right, so we already weighed out our sodium nitrate, about 8.5 grams or so. We have the real numbers later. So here's our coffee cup calorimeter. Okay, so here's our two coffee cups. They are contained in an insulating container. So we're going to add the 100 mils of water first. So let's add the 100 mLs of deionized water. This is just water alone. And we're going to put our lid on here. And here's our temperature probe. So it fits right. The temperature probe fits nicely into the calorimeter. Let's go to our screen here. So 
we already loaded the enthalpy of a chemical reaction. Okay, let's just hit collect. Nothing has been added, so we should get just a nice baseline that shows up. All right, so let that go for maybe 30 or 40 seconds, I think, uh, whatever the protocol says. And now we will add the NaNO3. So here you probably want a lab partner. You want to do this kind of fast. So here's the NaNO3. Stir it. And let's look at the screen here. Immediately when the NaNO3 was added, the temperature has gone down. So let this stabilize a little bit. And I'm slowly um, stirring this with the temperature probe. And it should stabilize. So notice we add sodium nitrate, 8.5 or so grams. And we add it to the water. Immediately the temperature has gone down. All right, so now we'll do our second run. We're going to do this in duplicates. to the about 8.5 grams or so. Let's stir it. So you can see once we added the sodium nitrate, the temperature went down. And as the temperature went down, we know that that will be an endothermic reaction. The delta H will be positive. So why is it endothermic? Why is our delta H positive? It's because immediately after we added the sodium nitrate, temperature went down. If the temperature went up, it would be an exothermic reaction. And here the temperature went down. And now we're going to continue to collect our data for about 300 seconds. So this is what it looks like after 300 seconds. Once again, this is when we added the NaNO3. The temperature went down. So what we're going to do now is going to highlight, so that cursor is in that cross form, and we're going to highlight with our left mouse button, bring everything the whole graph. And then under Analyze, we will go to Statistics, and we will get our minimum and maximum temperature. Our minimum temperature here is 16.94 degrees, and our maximum temperature is 19.91 degrees. So let's write that out in our notebook, and let's do the calculation portion of this. So here's our data. In our first run, we weighed out 8.48 grams of sodium nitrate. And upon dissolving it in 100 mils of water, our initial temperature was 19.65 degrees C. Our final temperature was 15.58 degrees C. In our second trial, we weighed out 8.52 grams. And here are our initial temperature, 19.91 degrees. Temperature went down to 16.94 degrees after 300 seconds. So we want to figure out the heat that uh, was taken in because the temperature went down. So we're going to figure out the heat of the system, and then from there, divide that by the number of moles of NaNO3 that we put in water. So now let's go to the data analysis, the calculation portion of this experiment. As a reminder, we weighed out 8.48 grams of sodium nitrate. We put it in 100 milliliters of water. We want to determine how much heat was uh, released or taken in by the system. So in doing so, initially our water temperature was 19.65 degrees C. We added the NaNO3 sodium nitrate. And our final temperature after 300 seconds was 15.58 degrees C. So let's go through the process of figuring out the enthalpy delta H of this reaction. So first and foremost, let's figure out the change in temperature. Change in temperature is final minus initial. So 15.58 minus 19.65 is about minus 4.07 degrees C. The second thing we want to do is figure out the mass of the solution. So remember, solution is solute, in that case it's NaNO3, plus solvent. So our solvent here is water. Most of the time in GenCam, our solvents will be water. 
So the mass of the NaNO3 was the 8.48 grams that we laid out. The mass of the water is 100 grams, so that comes from the 100 ml. So 100 ml is 100 grams because the density of water is 1 gram per ml. So we have a total mass of the solution of 108.48 grams. Now we're going to utilize this equation. So all of this derivation and equations actually come from the land handout. So we're not going to worry about the derivation. So the heat of the solution, which is solute plus solvent, is M mass S, which is the specific heat, times delta T, the change in temperature. So going through that, our mass of the solution is 108.48 grams. This is a constant. The specific heat of water is 4.184 joules over grams degrees C. Again, it's a constant that's found in our lab handout. And our delta T change in temperature, final minus initial, is minus 4.07 degrees. So doing that in our calculator, I'm getting a value of about minus 1,847 joules. We also have to figure out the heat taken in or absorbed by the calorimeter. So that's this thing. Okay, so this thing also takes in some of the heat once you add the sodium nitrate to the water. So the Qcal, to, according to our lab manual, again, this is all in our lab handout, is heat capacity times delta T. So the heat capacity constant for the calorimeter is 10 joules over degree C. That's a constant that was given to us in the protocol. Times delta T is minus 4.07 degrees C. That value is about minus 40.7 joules. Now we're in a position to solve for the heat of the system. So we're interested in the system, which is uh, the reaction that's occurring. So the heat of the system, Q, the lowercase q is heat, is equal to minus this, here, minus in parentheses, Q solution minus Q cal. Right? So this equation is also in our lab handout. So minus this whole thing. So minus 1847 joules, which is our Q solution, minus 40.7 which is our Q-cal. So that's going to give us about minus 1888 joules. And then minus into a minus makes it into a positive. So Q solution is minus 18.7. Q-cal is minus 40.7. So plus into minus is minus. So it becomes Q solution minus Q-cal. And if we take the minus of a minus, we get a positive. So this is how much joules. Now, the positive value tells me that um, heat is actually taken in, which makes sense because your temperature went down, if you remember on the graph. So this is how much heat is taken in. We want to do it per mole of NaNO3. So let's go over here. So we got 1888 joules of the system. We want it in joules per mole. So joules divided by how many moles of sodium nitrate we added to the water. So let's convert 8.48 grams to moles. That's about 0.1 moles of NaNO3. So joules over moles, 1888 joules over 0.1 moles. It's about 18,880 joules per mole of sodium nitrate. That is your answer for delta H, the NLP of this reaction. So go ahead and do this calculations for trial number two. This will be for 8.52 grams. And what you want to do is go through that same pipeline and get the enthalp or the heat of the system here and then average these two values. So the final take home point here is figuring out the, en the entropy. Okay, entropy. So we calculated enthalpy there. Now we want to figure out entropy. So delta S 
here's standard state because we're going to assume we're doing this at new temperature. It has to be greater than the enthalpy at standard state divided by T. Standard state means we are actually at 25 degrees C. So given our first trial, which was about 18,880 joules, uh, we're going to divide that by our standard state temperature, which is 219 Kelvin. And doing that, we get our delta entropy, delta entropy change in entropy at standard state to be about 63.36 joules over all Kelvin. So take a look at the units here of entropy, joules over all Kelvin. So this is entropy, measure of disorder. This is enthalpy, a measure of heat flow. So let's go back to our original thermodynamic equation here. So what are we looking for? Okay, we're looking for things to be exergonic. Okay, if it's exergonic, it happens on its own volition. And for that to happen, remember delta G takes input from delta H, FLP, delta S, entropy, also temperature plays a role there as well. This has to be negative. So this has to be negative. So given our delta H, FLP in standard state, which is what we calculated for trial one, giving 18,880 joules per mole. Our delta S entropy has to be greater than 63.36 joules over a mole Kelvin. So you see, if that entropy is greater than this value, then this term over here will be negative. And if that term is negative, that means the reaction is exergonic. So a couple of points to uh, take home, take home points here, is that uh, one thing we remember from our solubility table is that all nitrates are soluble, right? All nitrates are going to be soluble. So anytime something gets solubilized, or anytime you add more to a substance, for example, you add NaNO3 to water, that's going to increase the entropy. So that favors disorder. Anytime you mix things, there's more disorder. So dissolving sodium nitrate in water is entropically favored because it's more disorder. But delta H is positive, which is an endothermic reaction. So the key take home point here of this lab is that you can have something that is enthalpically not favored, positive value, but entropically favored, positive value. So as we know from our solubility table, all nitrates are soluble. This solubility, which is favored, but overall delta G will be negative, but our delta H is positive endothermic. Our delta S entropy is positive, favors more disorder. We still have a reaction that is favored to go to solution. Sodium nitrate will dissolve in water. It may not be enthalpically favored, but it is entropically favored 